you've actually been playing Portugal wrong this whole time. And no, that is not even Portugal, that's Persia. You need to get your facts straight, my son, alright? This is Portugal, except no! That's also not Portugal. This is Portugal. Fine, I'll stop it. So Portugal at the start doesn't have an amazing economy. We only get 22,000 in our revenue. We're gonna max out this and we're gonna tax the schnapps out of people. We're also gonna assign a couple of taxes. We are also suppressing our church. So we're gonna stop suppressing them because we need the extra 200 authority points. And we're gonna use the extra points to set up the greener gas campaign in uh, Lisbon. And we're also gassing Alentejo. Despite this province uh, not having that much population it does have most of our coal iron and sulfur deposits so we need to get pops into this particular region we're also going to be restructuring our government we're adding everybody from the opposition to the government this way we start with 91 legitimacy and with the recent patch legitimacy offers extra loyalists from standards of living as well as decreases the enactment time for reforms speaking of we start with some actually decent reforms but we definitely need to improve our situation situation and the law that would help us out the most at the start is getting per capita taxation we're essentially getting an extra 20,000 pounds from this which is the equivalent of doubling our economy essentially from just passing one single legislation buildings wise we start with quite a few urban and rural buildings and the cool part is that we have colonies in both the east and the south parts of uh, I guess South Africa these are not incorporated areas but they have a lot of population and a lot of potential so we will eventually incorporate them once we get more government administration we also start with a few extra ports one of these treaty ports is in india but we are not getting access to the uh, british market of course because with the 1.1 update they've changed it so now you would have to be above the british empire to take advantage of their particular market with the treaty port same goes for this one here we have a treaty port in uh, macau and we're gonna use this to our advantage because because this treaty port means an easy early war against Qing to grab a huge amount of land. Essentially, the plan is going to be get a little bit stronger, build up a little bit of an army, and then start munching into Qing. Because that's going to fix all of our problems. Qing has the resources, they have the population, and we need both resources and population. One more thing to note is that we do have some colonies going on in Africa, but these colonies are not amazing. So, so I'm actually going to set up an interest in uh, La Plata region, as well as the Australian parts and I am going to set up colonies in Celebes and once this is done I'm going to set up colonies in South America. I'm not going to really focus much in Africa until I actually research malaria prevention which is quite a long way from uh, where we're at right now. It's going to be really difficult to actually colonize stuff in Africa. Look at that 11,000 days to colonize a single province here. That is way too long and that is mostly because of the minus 90% malaria modifier. We only have one starting construction sector so we're going to build an extra two construction sectors from day one and afterwards we're gonna queue up a few logging camps we only have two logging camps which is insanely few amounts of logging camps we're also using the wooden buildings production method we're gonna stick with that for now we're switching over to iron frame buildings once we can afford it which is a little bit down the line not just yet we got to build some iron mines first remember that we do not start with any iron mines, so we're gonna have to uh, queue up one of these in Alentejo alternatively if you want to take the easy path you could also join the uh, customs union of the British you start with a defensive pact trade agreement and pretty much everything else remember that uh, the British and the uh, Portuguese have the oldest alliance continuous alliance in history if I'm not mistaken and there you go we join their union that means we're gonna be a lot better off now and it also means that we don't really need to worry about uh, the materials for constructing as much as we needed to before okay that was insanely fast holy snap per capita taxation is gonna be a huge help because we did join the British market another thing happens which is I don't have the shortages that I would have had otherwise so because of that I can start building some food industries furniture manufacturers essentially buildings that would give me a lot of GDP and economy as consequence which also means that I'm gonna grow a lot faster now but I am gonna rely on the British for the basic goods which I don't really have built for the time being we also want to switch to the dedicated police force to lower the influence that the land owners have 
local police force gives 10% landowner political influence. Same goes for the uh, charity hospitals and the religious schools. Eventually, we want to switch over to regular ones, public uh, schools and public hospitals. It's extremely vital that you build up a port in every single new colony that you get. If you don't do that, they're not going to have any market access and they're essentially going to be cut off from the rest of your growing empire. So the game plan is to attack the Chinese early on. Most likely, we'll be able to get both Japan and the British on our side because the British always want to get a treaty port in China and the Japanese, they just, they, they hate Qing for some reason. So uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. And remember early because at the start, Qing only has irregular units. They will eventually get proper units, but until that happens, we have a massive advantage. So we really need to make use of that advantage. That's why after all of this stuff is done in the queue, I'm going to queue up 20 barracks and I'm going to make a proper professional Portuguese army here, okay? I've built more barracks, so we now have 40 regular units instead of the, I don't know how many we started with. And we also get more conscripts because we've uh, changed some of our legislation around. But the jewel is the British army. Hopefully, they will help us out. And it looks like they will. How many soldiers they're sending? 81. Beautiful. That's all that I need to win this war. I'm going to wait up until before the final phase of the diplomatic play. If the Japanese are not joining and it looks like they're not, well, then I'm going to add some more provinces and it looks like we are a go as they say in a stargate sg1 you guys know what i'm talking about remember when uh, hammond used to tell sg1 when they're going through the stargate uh you gotta go sg1 i really missed that series seriously look at the amount of battles stacking up over here on top of each other we did pull a cheeky though and we committed a naval invasion over in their capital that should give us quickly a lot of war score the more land we actually managed to grab from them here and it looks like we're actually grabbing a ton of land holy shit they still didn't get the troops here all right finally they got there <laughs> we managed to grab almost all of their capital province man i actually have to recycle invasions because the british pulled out their troops from macau basically made me lose the war target and that's a big problem so i have to take that back i did another naval invasion in macau and i'm hoping that the british are gonna stay in the northern front whilst i do the southern invasion here that should theoretically get me uh to capitulate ching before oh god no on the bright side the French are taking on our debt, which is, you know, it happens a lot more than you can imagine. And the reason it happens is because I do improve relations with these nations. And there you go. We got the war target back. Come on, boys. Quick, 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 quick. Run, run, run. Boys, look at this right here, okay? So we got a situation in which we're basically going to lose the war. Doesn't matter what the outcome of this battle is. We are going to win this battle, but it doesn't matter because we got 99.4. They got 89.8. So that means after the next tick, after the next week, we're losing losing the war. However, sometimes you can still win the war if you know what you're doing. And it's not an exploit. It is, in fact, just using that brain that we all have over there. And we're going to be getting only Guangdong, which is the main state that we were interested in in the first place. They are going to accept this because their own war score is at 89.8. But if we propose this, it should be a peace deal that they're going to be accepting. There you go. We did take a part of China and we now have 13.4 million population in this one province. <laughs> Imagine after we incorporate this is going to be absolutely amazing. The point is, though, that with this province, we now can actually properly snowball. I was really hoping to get three provinces. The British cucked me when they pieced out without me, but it is what it is. It's going to make it a lot easier for me to uh, get the rest of the lands that I want from the Chinese in the next war. So until then, we got to fix our economy now, boys. And look at that. France wants to make me a protectorate. Like I said, if you improve relations with other nations, a lot of stuff can happen. I don't want to be their protectorate, though, so I'm going to decline that. That's probably why they took on my debt in the first place the way the ai works right now is it does to the player what it does to the other ai around essentially if it's trying to puppet a nation most likely it's gonna take on debt offer obligation whatever the snaps they need to in order to increase the relations with them also guys if you want to get this save i will make this available for all of my patrons and channel members link in description if you're interested in becoming one it would really help the channel out a lot i do this full time and any support comes a long way but if you cannot that's fine as well just watch my videos really helps me more than you can imagine jesus mother what the hell happened here <laughs> i thought it was like five six hundred to incorporate why is it saying a thousand two hundred now damn that's a lot of oh god yeah no that's not gonna happen no thank you sir i like how the population from here is also migrating to other parts of my empire right now oh dude i knew this would come at a price so they're using their obligations from taking on our debt to make us change to their customs union oh boy not sure i want to do that let's check 
like what the GDP is like. So right now, Great Britain's got 80 million. France actually has also 80 million, which is really not bad. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. No choice here. I'm still friends with the British, though. I got uh, great relations with them. But that does mean I uh, don't have the defensive pact with them anymore. Oh, we're safe, guys. Persia wants a defensive pact, so I can end up in a war against the Russians, probably. Of course, fine arts are now insanely expensive in our new customs union. Fine arts expensive in the French market? Hmm, why is that not a surprise? <laughs> Guess it's time that we uh, queue up the famous arts academy of uh, Beira, right? Holy mother of God, for the first time in, like, what, five? years we're actually on the positive with our economy here we went up to 2.3 million in loans but we're getting better boys we're getting better and that's mainly because we've been building up the buildings that are in high demand meaning the buildings that produce the goods that are in high demand in our market which right now unsurprisingly is a furniture manufacturers textile manufacturers them french market people really do be enjoying having a luxurious furniture in their houses don't they yes you could say they're living the vida loca huh? looks like we uh, got less affair which uh, also increased our economy massively holy shit we got 2.3 ducats just from uh, going to less affair that's great and another thing that increased everything is is the fact that we are lowering our radicals we actually managed to get max level for our law enforcement which uh, lowers by 75 percent the state penalty from turmoil as well as it lowers the radicals from the standard of living we do have a lot of radicals but most of these radicals are actually going down it's predominantly the people that we conquered in the chinese lands well 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 looks like we got some rebels in the south here in la plata lucky for us this means that we're going to be fully annexing this entire region as soon as we've won the war against these uh smelly rebellion over here or i guess they're not really rebels they're natives aren't they we're also at the same time going through the great famine so we're a little bit struggling with our economy but that should be fine in a while we're actually building up some of the basic stuff now like the regular wheat farms that we kind of lack a lot of wheat farms we've been really just focusing on the good stuff and we completely ignored the basic stuff so uh that's on me right there but hey we're fixing it don't worry we are absolutely fixing it let's also change the new production method there you go now we have a massive chunk of the south tip of uh, south america okay now this is just getting ridiculous the british want me to join their customs union ah uh, what am i gonna do here man I'm, I'm joggling between one and the other the british do have slightly better customs union because the british rises in that as well mm, i'll accept the british screw it it did tank my economy a little bit but it's gonna fix itself don't worry give it a couple of months we should be fine it basically has to readjust to the new most wanted and least wanted goods in the british British market now finally an alliance worthy of us there you go boys Spain is on our side that means we can actually start the second war against the Chinese now so now for the second war here we're actually fighting both the Qing and the Russians Russia does likely have uh, line infantry I got a really good feeling about this war boys so let's see yep that's correct we're absolutely destroying them that's mostly because of my amazing uh, British allies over here which have insane units speaking of insane units we also of course have skirmish boyos so we are doing our part that's for sure i mean look at all of them damages inflicted on the main Qing army victory after victory is ours let's hope that economically we can sustain this the problem is that um <laughs> i'm a little bit in debt here boys i am a little bit in debt and i have to fix this economy as soon as the war is over which shouldn't take as long as you would imagine it would hey we're even defeating the russian army with our amazing skirmish skirmisher units and despite being outnumbered the british are absolutely crushing everybody hey we capitulated russia noise oh no we got a revolution 52 so it should not go through which means i'm gonna keep on staying with the uh, enactment of universal suffrage hopefully we pass it before these guys get more support for the revolution and we should be over there you go we got three major provinces from the chinese absolutely amazing we have most of south china now and the the amount of money we're gonna make with this region is gonna be insane just like the amount of radicals we got 17 million radicals holy snaps more often than not what happens when you have huge deficits with your economy like i had before in my particular case when i was constructing stuff i did not have enough materials because there's not enough materials to go around on uh, the british market that i'm a part of so as consequence to mitigate those costs what i need to do is queue up a lot of logging camps cotton plantations and then i 
iron mines and so on and that will fix my economic situation as you can see here only 50,000 for construction goods compared to the uh, 80,000 that I was getting beforehand and it is most importantly decreasing and we reached the point where we're basically almost paid off most of our interest just 2 million in credit left which is actually acceptable so I'm gonna be going ahead and I'm gonna increase the amount of construction sectors I got now I will likely build more of these I just want to measure how much I'm actually losing financially I want to be on the plus still to get rid of the credit that I have completely so I will try to balance it to the point where it goes like plus two plus three K well we actually were able to build quite a few extra construction sectors with that being said the next war is gonna be even easier against Ching not only because of the alliance sets and everything but because we now have an established economy and we also have a growing army size as well the only thing I need to worry about is uh, judging the uh, infamy I got 9.7. That is really not bad at all, man. Holy snaps. I probably could attack a second country whilst I'm waiting for the truce with Ching to finish. It really took us a while to get our economy back on track, but we are definitely on the right path now since we're getting a lot of construction sectors undergoing and we're still making bank. I mean, absolute bank here. We're not even on high taxation. We're just on medium taxation. So if we went to very high, we'd be getting 60k by comparison. So let's go ahead and uh, say build an extra 30 30 or even 40 barracks in the South China area. I'm building these two because there's a ton of population here. So even if I lose this population in the war, it's irrelevant because, you know, I'm using Chinese to fight the Chinese, basically. We're also slowly creeping our way up. 82 million GDP. Not amazing, but not bad either. It's going to get a lot better once we get the rest of China. And it looks like good old Britain and Spain is going to help out again. So it's going to be easy pachisi. Not to mention, we got 160 regular of battalions right now 120 of which are in south china so yes we are making the chinese fight the chinese that's just the big brain right there boys that's how you use the big brain honestly at this point in the campaign i'm mainly just building railroads and nothing else because my infrastructure is so bad sulu wants an alliance no thank you wait did i lose my alliance with spain oh no spain is getting its ass kicked all right yeah no let's get another alliance with somebody else maybe prussia austria anybody else really i'm not sure what i'm more creeped out by the fact that the English are actually killing over the Spaniards or the fact that the English are now a republic and their flag is basically the flag of Ireland? Reversed Ireland? What the hell is going on in the UK, man? Well, would you look at that, guys? It is time for another war against Ching. But this time, it's just us against Ching. In fact, I plan on taking a huge chunk out of them. That's why I decided to attack them by myself. Oh boy, we seem to have a ton of shortages, especially glass, oil, and lead. And that means I'm gonna have to queue up some more glass. I've already queued up like 20-something glass works but I guess I should build a few more and then after I'm gonna also increase the amount of construction sectors that I have economically speaking we're doing amazing now that we have the strong economic area of China under our control realistically speaking most of the GDP comes from the provinces that we already took with the rest coming from the northern bits from here in the Beijing area most of the western bits of Qing are not really that productive low population low amount of uh, GDP so we're probably gonna focus on this in the later part of the conquest of China. I also tried to take it slowly. I could have done the conquest of China a lot faster, but I wanted to, you know, not destroy the country completely. And hey, end of the day, we're still the third greatest power with the GDP right now. And we're growing. We're definitely growing despite only having a small bit of population here. Look at how much pops we got though. Like we managed to go up so much. 2.8 million in the capital, 1.7 here and 2.1 over here. We're getting 1 million pops from migration alone. That's obviously from the Chinese provinces that we conquered, people migrating in here. Still, Portuguese is the primary culture in all three of these provinces. But look at all the tiny small bit of uh, different cultures aside from Portuguese. It pretty much looks like a Rubicon, doesn't it? Let's also not forget to set up our trade policies. Wherever something is needed more for export or for import, I'm going to be focusing on that particular thing. You should always do this every few years. Keep an eye on this because it does fluctuate and it does change significantly. Thank you. 
Wait, what? Did we just discover oil in Guinea? Hot diggity dog, that is amazing because we do have our little Guinea Pogchamp province here. Wait, where is my oil? Oh, don't tell me oil's in uh, the other side, the one that the British have or the French have. Oh, it is in the province that the French have. No. Oh, this is horrible. I'm never going to get this, man. France is one of my close allies right now. It pretty much feels like an infinite amount of GDP growth potential when you get the provinces in China because it really doesn't have any actual limitations. The only limitation is how fast can you actually build stuff here? You do have the population, which is usually the problem, and you do have all of the resources here as well. I mean, look at that. We literally have so much sulfur mines here and so much population to go alongside those sulfur mines and work those sulfur mines. And it's the same for everything else. Look how much coal as well we have. We're literally the world's biggest producer of coal simply from these three different provinces that we took from China. I mean, don't get me wrong. My initial province here is also doing its bid. Alentejo is definitely producing coal, but it really pales in comparison to the amount that we get from the Chinese lands. We also paid off all of our credits, so let's start expanding our construction sectors. Gonna bring these bad boys over here to the front of the queue. Let's continue to alt click all of the construction sectors. And it looks like we still can build a ton more construction sectors. Let's build them up in the Chinese lands then. Let's uh, max out Yunnan. And I've also started integrating these lands too. It is extremely expensive bureaucracy wise it literally cost me 2200 bureaucracy just to start incorporating Guangdong alone and would you look at that boys they want me to enact council republic which means that we would become a communist nation. Oh God, I guess it's the communist states of Portugal instead of communist China in China. The irony in this is just absolutely insane, isn't it? No matter who owns these lands, it, 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 it's, it's, not, it's the bad guys, okay? It's the bad guys. And now there's a revolution for preserving monarchy. However, the states that are seeding in this revolution don't have that many soldiers. The states that I remain with, namely mostly the Chinese states, they do have soldiers. So I'm confident I can easily defeat this revolution and I can still enact the communist dictatorship. And it's pretty much exactly as I thought it would be. They have 30 units against 178 that we have. I'm not even going to do anything. I'm just going to enjoy my baguette with cheese here whilst we crush the revolutionaries like a true socialist, right? Ah, uh, die, you scumbag rebellion. Uh, I just realized something. The rebellion is led by my own government what hold up a second what is going on here <laughs> and we killed them world's quickest rebellion destroying scheme ever mm? and since we do have our troops at max capacity let's also continue with the next expansion into the ching lands are you sure you want to see the snake i committed there you go my boys we've basically gotten a pp into the chinese lands and i did this because i wanted the province of beijing beijing alone has a 13 million gdp and and 17 million population and now because of that look at this we got 500 million gdp and the great ching only has a hundred million left by comparison we've been eating all of their gdp basic oh my god we got 291 million population what when oh my lord that is in Sahin. and what the schnapps is going on here holy mother of god french proletarian revolt has most of france wow all right that is not good for me because i'm actually Actually allied to France but I'm also not gonna be helping them thank you very much and would you look at that boys we have officially become a communist nation known to the world as as Portugal wait we didn't get a name change we're, we're still just Portugal really I was hoping for some like cool name change like the communist party of Schnappeldoop Portugal or something I don't know oh my god we have a hundred percent legitimacy now with the communist party uh I see where this is going is this a situation in which there's only one party available to us because I'm not complaining about that. I don't mind having a hundred legitimacy always. And of course, the only options right now instead of universal suffrage are autocracy and oligarchy. What is more communist than autocrats and oligarchs, right? And look at the amount of people that were converting to Portuguese per month. 30,000 per month seems like pretty sizable amount of Portuguese going on. And la creme de la creme is that every 
every single ownership of our factories is worker cooperative, which gives out extra machinists and laborers. No more government run, no more publicly traded. Everybody owns the country, right? That's that's how it really goes, is, is it? Is it? And what do you know? The British Republic is attacking Spain once more. What is the war goal? Oh, this has nothing to do with them. This is some colonial war that the Spanish took the side. Why would you do that, Spain? That is just not smart, is it? Well, actually, they are winning against the British, so you never know. Let's see what happens here. I also really enjoyed to see how approval, disapproval doesn't matter as much when you're a communist nation. It pretty much is unanimous when, you know, there's nobody else to oppose you in the government, is it? <laughs> and passing legislation is a little bit easier. Problem is, you do get some very specific legislations, if you know what I mean. I fought pretty hard to uh, get rid of censorship and check out what my people want here. They're really desperate for me to restore censorship. That does not make much sense in my opinion. But hey, if that's what they want, I'm going to ignore them because we don't want censorship, okay? This is not a democracy. Your opinion is not important, Portuguese people. Okay, come on. Just go with the times. This is not like it used to be. And uh, another thing I have a complaint about is that I'm still second world power because of the stupid prestige. I got double the amount of GDP that the Brits have, but because they have a hundred extra prestige, I'm still not the world's first great power. I feel like maybe prestige should not be this important overall. Just saying, my own opinion, of course. Also notice that Austria has the actual Austrian flag now, which begs the question, are they a republic? They are! Oh, they are a republic. Holy schnapps. Everybody's becoming a republic. What about Prussia? They're a constitutional monarchy. All right, that, that explains all the flag changes. I guess France, same. Democratic Republic. Wow, so many different types of governments, aren't there? Well, boys, we got to the point where we can actually puppet what's left of Qing now because we got them down to size enough that we are able to do it. So we're going to go for that particular war goal. That means this is the last war against Qing. Afterwards, we own everything in the Chinese region. Okay, it looks like Qing just gave up and without even going to war, <laughs> became our puppet. Uh, I mean, I know I'm beautiful, but you don't need to do it like that, Qing. Come on. Did I just say I'm beautiful? I mean handsome. I'm handsome, okay? It's what my mama used to tell me. Clearly, I can trust her. She's totally not biased. Hey, look at that. We also have almost the same amount of radicals as loyalists. So we got that going for us. And with the entirety of China now under our control, and with an insane economy, I'm gonna quit this because it's gotten so laggy, I literally cannot even play for longer than 20 minutes without getting upset with the multiple crashes, with the insane lag. So please patch the freaking game. Thank you very much. And if you guys enjoyed this video, check out this awesome Argentina run next. And I wanna give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support. 